Hello everybody and welcome to our new stream. Sorry for the little mishap before. I fixed it now. <laughs> How are you guys? How is everything? Excited to see Fisher, hopefully. Yeah, I'm excited to see some Fisher games. Yeah, I hope... Uh, I try to get some that are not that famous because Fisher is... Is that from me? Sorry for the little mishap before. What happens here? I can hear myself again. Okay, now it should be fine. Yeah, I've muted it on my... <laughs> muted now. I can see us in both Twitch and YouTube. Yes. And does it work on Twitch? Yes, it does work on Twitch. And we are back. Yes. <laughs> and we are going to look at Fisher's games today. Um... And we're going to start with a tactic, as usual. Yes. Well, with some tactics. This is the first one, Fishers with uh, with the white pieces here. Um, hope you guys don't know all of them, because as I was saying, I think Fisher is uh, one of the most famous players, and everybody knows his games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know me, I'm not. I haven't looked at my classics, so. Uh... Good. I don't remember having seen this, but I, I think I spot the white theme. You have an idea, I'm sure you do. I have an idea, especially when you tell me it's a tactic, um, that h6 could be something we wanted to um, sacrifice a piece on. Mm -hmm. Probably the bishop. So Probably I'm just working. Bishop. Like, bishop takes h6, gonna draw some arrows. Bishop takes h6, pawn takes h6, uh, what then? Um, I don't feel like sacrificing the rook as well, because then we only have one piece. <laughs> oh, we maybe we could get the other rook into the attack, but I think it's a little, might be too aggressive, I'm not sure. Um, because we could also just maybe move the queen to a square where it's attacking h6. That makes more sense, no? Sends yes, and then if the bishop goes to cover it, because the bishop is the only piece that can protect a six after yeah. that, um, from g oh, from g seven, then probably f six is just working. Yeah, because then the bishop can't keep protecting a six, and that's the point. Yes, yeah, that uh, you have to see queen e three and then f six. Bishop takes h6. I think this is fairly easy because all the pieces are pointing at h6. There's a queen on d3 ready to jump in. But what's not so obvious, I thought, is the is the idea of bringing the queen and taking it, well, kind of slowly because usually you would go check, check, check and try to <laughs> <laughs> to mate already. But here you have to see that this this really works. No queen e3, and there's no the bishop g5. Is queen d2 as good? Yes, queen d2 should be the same. Not sure if there is any minor difference. Doesn't look like it because uh, it's the same idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the point is that bishop g5 doesn't work, right? Because you just take the bishop. The pawn is pinned there. So bishop g7 is what? Black played here and now f6. And this is, well, you're getting your piece back and you keep the attack. Here, black went for rook h8, which is a mistake, but can't blame him because this position is not easy at all. <laughs> no, I mean, it makes sense. You know, I can see the point in going rook h8. What is uh, black's, does black have a move that's... Yeah, the point is that you, you kind of have to defend yeah. h6 somehow. But he has another move here, and that's queen g4. And this looks better. Well, white is still has a clear advantage. So the point is that you take back with the queen. Ah, okay, now I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you defend h6 here. And well, we have rook g3. I've looked a bit at this because the attack seems quite strong. And I think that black's defense is not easy. For example, here you have this queen d3 because I would like to bring my other rook into the game with rook f1. 
if king h8 just rook f1 this should be very good for white because then where is the queen going and i'm probably going back to attack the pawn on h6 yeah and black won't have a good a good way to defend it queen e3 and rook h3 and the pawn should should fall so here on queen d3 the move that kind of keeps black in the game is e4 it's very subtle no and still you're not getting uh, too much survival chances <laughs> it's just a no, little bit difficult a little bit of hope here yeah but rook h8 um is what he played in the game and let's try to come up with a good move here what are we going to play with white rook h8 the idea is obvious no that he wants to defend h6 after he takes back with the king here yeah that makes sense so uh of course we could take on g7 but then that's what black is probably uh, has prepared for Yes, exactly. Maybe we could. Uh, okay, let's look at like some candidate moves. We could throw in a check maybe on e4, for example, um, to make the king go here on g8. Yeah. Where it might have, and then play rook g3. Looks yeah. very good. Uh, it does. Or maybe the king straight. No, I, I like putting my rook here. Um, what does black have to do there? Okay, so queen e4, uh, king g8 is forced. Yeah. Rook g3. Uh, now the threat is to take on g7 with with that with the rook probably. Mm -hmm. um, which wouldn't be checkmate, but it would be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think a rook on g7 is annoying. <laughs> Annoying yeah. enough. Maybe he has to. He can't run. He can't go to f8 because then we take with the pawn on g7 and take the rook on h8. Yeah. So after rook g3, maybe he's going to have to play rook h7. I think so. so yeah. But then I don't know. <laughs> And it I feels like seven is... great, and we don't have to take the rook yet, so we can maybe put more pieces, like then play rook f1 and have another piece join. Also, I'm going to see what, if the chat has anything clever to say. Yeah, let's see what. There are some nice suggestions there. G8 and G, G5. Yeah, Not rook sure. f1. No, the point is you are trying to bring more pieces, but you don't have to kind of because I think if you help black put the rook on h7, you help him a little bit. If you play queen e4 first, so you keep uh, all the threats and this king on h7, but you you bring another piece. It's something that you wanted to do and works uh, works directly, no? Yeah. The point is that black cannot move here. Rook f1, I think this is a very, very, very good move. Add peace, yes. <laughs> yeah, man, this is, uh, both a uh, lot of people are mentioning Rook F1. Yeah, just bring... The thing is that Black is tied up here, no? What What is he doing? I don't think there are any useful moves here. He played uh, Queen to B5. The bishop can't move. Let's just show this. Bishop f8 runs into mate now. Queen e4. And rook g3 and it's over. Well, it's the same position that you wanted before with uh, with an extra tempo. Rook g7, king f8. And I don't know. Maybe bring the rook to f3. That looks nice. Ah, I have an idea. What if we br bring the rook to g3 and then play queen h7? Oh, that's a nice idea. That's nice, no? <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> and I think that's over. <laughs> yeah. So bishop f8, no. He played queen b5. And again, you don't have to take on g7. Nothing has changed. Um, if you take on g7, king takes defense f7. Oh, also, he can take on f, uh, 
f1, right? <laughs> oh, right. Sorry, queen b5 now attacks, attacks f1. So that's a that's a big uh, <laughs> big point. Thank you, Sophie. And queen f3 was played. <laughs> yeah, multi-purpose. Multi-purpose, yes, because you want to take on f7, but yes, let's not forget about the rook on f1. And here he tried rook c4. And first check, king g8 and pawn takes g7, game over. Okay, let's see more because I yeah. want to get to the th good stuff. Here good it's... Stuff. Not the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this just is the... good stuff, but it's just warm up. <laughs> okay. So this is black to play, so I'm going to flip oh. the board. I'm also going to flip the board. And let's try to find some ideas here. So what's the, we're up in exchange, but white has a few pawns for it, it looks like. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So something's going on in the H file. <laughs> Definitely. Actually, he just played rook h8, if I remember yeah. correctly here. Yeah. I remember I played a game um, in, its, in the tournament in Italy here in the beginning of January, and I had a position that was, I wouldn't say it was similar, but I had both of my i had the black pieces and i had placed both of my books in the h file and actually the position was not very good for me um <laughs> I, I found out I, I ended up winning the game but i found out later that it was actually not a very good position that i had even though it looked good and the mm. engine just kept uh asking me to like get the books out of the h file <laughs> <laughs> it just seems so uh like such such a good place for the rooks when they're doubled uh, against the opponent's king here. Uh, so I don't think we need to get the rooks out of the eight. No, ball. probably here we. Uh, but there's also <laughs> we something can maybe keep them. The could even be hanging. And okay, we need. I think we need to find a way to join the queen. Yeah. Get the queen in. So maybe something like f5, mm -hmm. um, with the idea that. Okay, f5. Let's say that he just takes takes on f5. with maybe this pawn. Yeah, and the idea would be to take here. Maybe I'm not sure if it's working. Uh, to take here and then go with the queen on h4. Okay, but uh, look for options if you want to play. Look for options if you if you want to. To make that idea possible, what other option do you have? Then playing f5? No, or after, after after playing f5. He take... Uh, okay, we could maybe consider to take back first. Or? Or? <laughs> and maybe then we want to take here. Yeah, that's another option, no? Because we don't, because we want to get rid of, we want to have the bishop here so that then if the queen goes here, we would actually win the bishop. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll see, it's probably a great attack already. <laughs> I'm joking. No, you have to calculate it, but it does look very promising. And this is what yeah. happened. F5. Bishop c4 is being suggested, uh, but ah. I don't have to take. No, bishop c4, the idea is that if bishop takes then rook h3 that's a nice idea but maybe i can just play bishop g2 on bishop c4 here so if this uh yeah let's show it on the board bishop g2 oh do you have it on the board yeah let me refresh yes okay, maybe now so you then... can still go f5 no yeah now the yeah but now yeah e4 is defended there is a difference because in the previous position like if you play a five here on g5 i think we can just take on e4 and then h3 is hanging right if knight takes e4 yeah this looks really good we open the bishop, but with the bishop on c4, we don't have this idea anymore. So this would be the difference. f5 here, uh, g5. Yeah, how is this here? And now e4 yeah, is defended. Pawn takes, knight takes, I want to play, no? It's still complicated, probably. Bishop e6, but... I don't see the point in 
bringing white species to to where they belong. Yeah, and white maybe has some ideas about taking on d6 and going queen f6 or yeah need to get in some exchanges yes this is getting complicated so f5 directly we don't need that pawn on c4 um and here white took on f5 this is a mistake because of rook h3 we're going to see it but queen d6 was the option and here we can still take on h3, we still have this idea, but uh, this is only a draw now. And it's a draw because the queen is no longer on d2. So here check, let's say king f2, check, king e1, and here if we give another check, the king is running to d2. Uh, yeah, so and we have to, c to c c1, yeah. So we have to yeah. give this check, because if king d2, then we have rook d8, yes? Uh, yeah. And this makes it a draw. Perpetual. No, just and we could on uh, here. once the king goes to e2. On e2, can we take on g4? Yeah. yeah. And then on king d2, go queen g2, king c1, and maybe play for rook h2 ideas. In this position, if we take with the uh, bishop here. Oh, bishop c4. You mean. Sorry, yeah. I was looking at queen g4. Okay, bishop c4. Let's calculate that. So I don't have... What you're saying is that I don't have king d2. No, because rook d8 is still... Uh... It's still there. So what do I have to do? King e3. I have to go Just king e3. Oh. So I'm comfortable. <laughs> Right. After the king looks awkward. Let's see it on the board. Yeah. Take here. King e3. And here I'm afraid I don't have good checks. Or do I have good checks? I have a check on g3. Oh, do you have it on the board? Yes. Let me refresh. There you go. So uh, because play queen d3, he can actually go to d2, and we don't yeah. have it anymore. We don't have the same ideas. Okay, but maybe do we have some rook h2? Probably nothing happens because of king to c1. And my king is a bit <laughs> all, yeah, all alone. <laughs> By the way, I just have to say, read out this comment. Okram, good life, is saying, yup, yup, finally deadly king hunts again. <laughs> Crack, cracking open with beer, dog on my lap, and trying to solve it before Sophie. Good luck. <laughs> that sounds like such a good life. <laughs> with like a dog and a beer and playing chess. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, what else? Queen g3? Oh, yes, queen g3 oh. is being... Sorry, Sophie. So this is just a draw. Yes, but now there is no more draw, right? King d2? And you can't just one. And what do we do here? Uh, can we can we sacrifice the rook? <laughs> like how? Yes, uh, rook d eight. And so, when... he, uh, so rook d eight, queen takes d eight, and then queen f four. Out if it's if it's queen f4 or if it's queen d3 one one of those no no but queen d3 i'm still on the d file so i'm i'm going to be happy with that <laughs> so queen f4 and then i'm gonna have to make use of my arrows king c2 maybe queen takes uh queen f4 now the king can't go to c1 but if it goes to c2 is it even? Looks like we are out of bullets there. We're running out of bullets, exactly. We're going to the hospital, not to the ball. <laughs> going to the hospital, yes, unfortunately. And what happens if rook h2? Uh, if rook h2, I think king c1 is what we were looking at. And then what? King c1? And my idea is that here, I, I also 
want to mate you. So I have something like queen e7 and rook d8. Yeah. My next move is queen e7. So you don't have time for uh, things like queen g2 or... No, queen everything F2. has a check right now. Yeah. And it's not... Queen e3... Run. Run. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Run away. Run forest. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. This is a nice king hunt. It's just yeah, but it's just uh, gone wrong. <laughs> the king hunt is not enough in itself. You have to actually have something by the end. Um, yeah, I think here it's it's over, right? We can let this go. There's only another check on a2, but that's not very helpful. Yeah, queen e3, and that's bishop a2. Yes, it's a check, but is it... I don't Am think I not taking it? Yeah, I think so. King a2? You want to take on c3, but queen e7. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to our line. Here we should take the draw, let's not be greedy. I don't know who Epithar is, but yes, I am Danish. I assume that you are Danish as well, by the sound of your name. Okay. okay, so taking on c4 is not... Is that Does not work just... here, no. We have to just take the draw here. So queen d6 was the best uh, move for white here, but he took on f5 in the game. And then... Fireworks. Yeah. Now everything works because the queen's on d2 and you're going to see it in a line here. Is well, there any point here? Could white not have gone to... No, never mind. No matter what we take with the check. Yeah. Yeah. And we kind of get to the same position. If king f2 here, that is the position where the queen is on d2, right? And we give another check. He played to e2, and now bishop c4. Now there's no running to c1. Exactly. <laughs> the queen is on the way. So queen h2, and there you go. It's going to be over. He resigned here. Mate is coming in a few more moves. Let's move on then. Very nice. Let's see this one against Palbenko. He has the white pieces here. I'm going to flip this. This is very nice. I think this is a very nice game. Oh, white side? White side, yes. Right. Is what game Benko is this? Uh, we are looking at Fisher's games today. And, and this guy his opponent, did he invent the Benko Gambit? Yes, that's him. <laughs> I never played the Benko Gambit, but I... You're very close to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was this a get? No, this could not have been a... Oh, could it? How Sorry? is it that the Benko Gambit goes? No, you have to... To play... To give up many pawns with b5 and a6. This is not a Benko Gambit. Usually yeah. these pawns are missing there. The one yeah. on b7 and the one on the a5. And the point is that you try to get counterplay on the a and b files with black. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. My first thought is to take on d4 and play e5 to open up the light square bishop. Yeah, that's a good so, idea. taking here taking a piece so he has to take back and then instead of moving the knight playing e5 which threatens checkmate on um, seven so he has to protect that um, which is not so i mean it can be done of course but it's i mean maybe either f5 looks ugly f5. though but... but i think it's the only move no yeah because h6 we can probably just Yeah, I was looking if h6 was an option, but it's... can probably mm. even take the knight on d6 and and keep going. Yeah, just taking here, that's true. Okay, so let's say he plays f5. Mm. f5 is then protected by one, two, three pieces. <laughs> we have also three pieces attacking at the left side, I don't know. And your queen is hanging on h5. And my queen is hanging, that's a good point, actually. 
Mm, okay, so then there's the option of taking on um, taking the queen on e8, and then once black takes back, taking knight on d6. But our knight is also hanging on c3, so exactly, it's not so so clear. But I still want to let's just see. Okay, so take take e5, f5. Now the queen is hanging. And the bishop is, uh, the knight is hanging. I'm gonna see if anybody has suggestions in the chat. Okay, you have okay. a you have a very good idea there. You want to play e5, but this is uh, actually asking yourself. It's this is very funny because um, you've probably seen that I have uh, created this challenge of solving some puzzles, uh, six puzzles a day. I'm already on day nine today, so I'm going to do that later. <laughs> but I'm solving from a book called Imagination in Chess. And I've reached the chapter where, um, well, in some lines that you calculate, you see that they don't work. So what you have to do is teach yourself to look why that doesn't work and try to fix that. So this okay. could easily be inside that chapter. So why doesn't this work? Because the idea yeah. itself is not bad, right? It, ah, wait a minute. Okay, but I think Harris, I think you're cheating because you know the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if because... you know the game, that's not very... <laughs> but I mean, it's that's a good idea. So because f5 is what saves black. Yeah. Then Harris suggestion is to play rook f6 before we go e5. So taking on d4, Black takes back on d4 and then rook f6. Yeah. That is the solution. And you can only find this if you don't give up on the line, but just, you know, keep looking at it. Why doesn't it work? My idea is not bad. It has to work. This this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But it doesn't work because of f5. So here we play rook f6 and that's how you find it in a game. Now if bishop takes f6, you play e5 and the, the f pawn is blocked. And he played king g8 in the game, but still, still e5. No? He played h6 and now just move the knight. He played knight e2 here. I think there are already many, many moves that win. Knight e4, knight e2 is just fine. I wonder if we want to take on h6 next. That might be, yeah, that's what I was... might be an but idea. Idiots, you move the knight before. Yeah, you have time. <laughs> okay, yes, I know the the games go to the end when I upload them, but I don't think there's anything I can do regarding that. They just do that <laughs> when I upload them, so I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I agree with John here. If Rook F, uh, F6 looks insane but solves the problem, I think this must be so hard to find doing a game. I mean, you have to be so creative to think of a move like that. Yes, yeah. yeah have to solve okay so let me see if we have time for one more let's try this one oh it's gone okay and here it's black to play this is a really nice one white has just played rook h8 trying to look away so it doesn't get <laughs> <laughs> so whose side are we looking for black moment let's try to find some moves here okay um could there be some check motives good question no because that king is look kind of stuck there on, on b3 yeah he doesn't have any of these squares he only has uh the square he's standing on in, in a2 and the light squared bishop could potentially like just take both of those away um so okay how to start Maybe, yeah maybe going 
E5, which is also like, a, uh, what do you call it? Like a principal move when we have the bishop pair to go mm. E5. So even not leading to checkmate, it's, it should be uh, a logical move somehow. But I don't have to take, no? No, he doesn't have to take, that's true. But then if he doesn't take... Maybe uh, yeah, so this... is coming in. Something on F5. Yeah. Hmm. You have a good, very good point that here there is something about the king, but uh, you can you can go the other way around. <laughs> ah, so we want to have the maybe the king on a five and, and the, the bishop on a four. Do we want to yes. okay? Um, just. For now, king a5, bishop a4, b3, that would just lead to mate. So white has to worry about that. In the game, he took on h6. And this obviously... Oh, that... <laughs> because he had just took the rook on h8. He could at least go rook a8 now, rook a8. right? Yes, but I think this is... This is still... Um, quite bad because we start picking up pawns. Something like rook h1, maybe just... Start getting the pawns. Mm. Like this. Yeah, it's a very passive position. There's also an idea with rook d1 and rook d2 in this position instead of rook h1. But I agree, rook a1, rook a8 is just probably what you have to do here. You don't want to get mated, which happened yeah. here. But that's good because now we have a great game. <laughs> yeah. So the threat is bishop a4 and b3. He went king a2. And what do we do here? Mm. Can okay, we still, if we play bishop a4 now, I guess the point is that he will play b3 himself. Yes. So maybe we have to go for b3. Yes. To not give him the option. That's the and one. Then yeah, he has to take. And and what? Bishop a4, but is that? Yes. King a2. King b4. Nice. King then, b4. Yeah, then b3 is not. Well, b3 is the only move because if he doesn't play b3, bishop b3 and, and uh, game over, no? And bishop yeah. b1 would be the other one, actually, but this loses because now we can win the bishop here with bishop c2. So he played b3 in the game, but now we take king b2 and rook d1. And the idea with rook d2. You play king a1 and king c3 and resign. <laughs> yeah. Bishop a3 and bishop b2. And the white book is just so outside on eight. Outside, yes, outside the game completely. Okay. Okay, so now I, I had another I had some other tactics here that were really, really nice. But I really want to show you this game because I liked it a lot. And then I promised you that I would show you the game against Anderson, which is I know many people will know it. It's very famous, but it's also so nice. So let's let's go there. This is Fischer with the black pieces. He's playing against Nikolic. And let's try to find a, a way to arrange our pieces here. Uh, let's try to find some ideas, no? How, how to play here with black. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Harish. Yes, I saw your comments and... Uh, well, you are solving all the tactics, really? all right. <laughs> Oh yeah, and Harris, it's okay that you, uh, I mean, you can of course give the solution once we've looked at it for some time, that's fine. You're just um, joking, I think. <laughs> yeah, I was just joking, <laughs> because I couldn't find it myself. Um, okay, I mean, I just saw, now I just saw Ayan suggesting G5, which is actually the move that I was 
looking at first, but then I thought that white could just take an h5 because the, both the queen and the knight are uh, eyeing h5. But g5 is what I would want to play <laughs> to grab some <laughs> things out, but I just can't make it work right now. Um, like g5, knight six, h5. Then I, I'm not sure what to play them. Yeah. Maybe it is the move, but look at, is it the move? Um, would you play it in the game? In a game? Not before, not right now. Not, not at this right point. now, no? <laughs> I think I would look at other moves and then maybe I would return to the move afterwards. <sighs> okay. But I think it's because this knight on f4 is a pretty good piece yeah. for right, right now. So that's the idea behind uh, g5. Maybe we could consider going knight. Maybe, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Knight e6, maybe, but it's not just trading off a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. but what else is, what are the weaknesses here? Well, not. Right now, maybe they are not that weak, but some points that you could attack in white's position. Okay, so this h3 mm -hmm. is a little bit of a weakness. It's protected. It's protected, yes. Right, right now, now, but maybe one could go. Knight on c3 is not protected. And there is, yeah, exactly. And. Um, but how do we, oh, okay. So you want to maybe put a knight uh, here and maybe, then no? trying to go here and make the light even weaker. That could be an idea. So gonna... here... Got our knight h7, preparing g5. Well, knight oh, h7, good... yes. Preparing knight to g5, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have two people on knight h7 now. Yes. And actually, you could combine that with queen d7 that you were mentioning before. And if you force h4, I think you're a very happy black player here. <laughs> yeah, because of g4 then, right? Yes, and all the light squares. Yeah. So here he goes knight h7. Very nice. Okay, bishop d2. White gets the pieces out. Knight g5. Here is a time to maneuver first. Bring all the pieces and then let's see where that gets us. Queen d7. Now if h4, we have bishop g4. And then knight f3 and I don't think this is something that white really wants to allow here. Now this looks very good. Yes, he's kind of uh, giving up this for free, no? All the light squares. Okay, we're not winning right away, but we do have many ideas. Maybe remove that knight from f4 and play for queen h3. Could be... Could be there. Ooh. So in the game he played king h2, which makes a lot of sense. I want to keep my pawn on h3 defended and not allow you to play on my light squares. And here starts a, a, a beautiful idea. He plays bishop h6. Okay, this looks very... Uh, weird, I mean, does not uh, exactly, three. there's something about the knight on f4, but it's not so obvious, no, it's just a very subtle move, bishop h6, but you are going to see the idea in a, in a moment. So now white plays a5, it all makes sense to create counterplay there, and let's try to find something here for for black. How do we continue? Maybe we go here. That's Maybe like, you go there. Go here. Taking is. I mean, I guess it's. I don't know if it's forced, but. It's the first thing we should look at. First thing we should anyway. look at, yeah. <laughs> then maybe instead of taking back right away, we could take this knight. Because okay. then H is not protected anymore. But I'm not sure if it's if it's working or if we just. Uh, removing all our attacking pieces because if white takes back here on f5 mm, mm, 
Yeah, I mean, then maybe taking the bishop and eyeing the h3 square, but he could maybe just play h4. But also in your and... line, white has options, no? When you are thinking about yeah. taking back on f4, white has the option of taking with the g-pawn as well. Yeah, that's true. And maybe get a rook in the g-file. My idea was that when I take back with the queen on h f3, I'm, I'm going to have h3 defended. Because your line was like this, no? To go here, takes, um, takes this one, and here I want to take. And when you take back, queen takes and h3 is defended. Yes. We can Good look point. at that. Maybe there is something, maybe I'm missing something there. We will look at that in a moment. Well, actually, let's see it now. Knight f3, bishop takes. Do you see it on the board now, Sophie? Yeah. So here you want to take with the bishop, and I wanted to take with the g pawn. Takes here, right? We and have then, nothing but. Um, it doesn't make sense to take an h3 first because then he can play bishop g2. So you have to yes, take here. Yes, I think I think pawn takes f3 is the only one here. Queen f3, h3 is defended. Yeah. We should still have compensation because, well, the f-pawns are doubled, the light squares are still kind of weak. Something like knight e4 could be an idea in this position, maybe. Could be an interesting position to play as well. It's, it's not so clear. It's not clear at all, no. The g-file, yes, white can play rook g1, but what is he going to do on the g-file? Okay. But let's keep looking. So this is something, but let's keep looking. What was the uh, the name of the book? Uh, it was Imagination in Chess. I'm actually also going to write that down. Imagine. <laughs> Imagination in Chess by Pata Gaprindashvili. I can't <laughs> spell that. I'm going to look up the... It's like, it's like Nona. It's like Nona Gaprindashvili, but uh, it's not Nona. <laughs> it's the same... <laughs> But the same last same, name. Same last okay. name, yes. Um, do we have any suggestions then? Instead of... Uh, what else can we do of... here? Yes, instead of knight f3. Obviously, there is something with the light squares. And it's very funny because the engine does Ooh, not what? see this move until very, very late. You have to give it a, long, a, a lot of time to think here. You had an idea, uh, Sophie? <laughs> no, but it's just, it's just because Bonaski says bishop g4, and then he wanted a Danish word, but I don't. But it's, uh, uh, bishop g4, which looks. Charlie also suggested bishop g4. Oh, yeah, I can see that. So, what is the idea of bishop g4? What if I take on g4? You can just give up a piece, and, and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> bishop g4, okay, let's see what it. What is it even doing? It's threatening the queen. It's eyeing the f3 square. So uh, if taking is the obvious response, mm -hmm. then we could either. I don't want to take with the queen, of course, because trading off queens doesn't seem very natural. But we could take with the knight, which would be a check, if nothing else. Um, but we could also maybe take with the eight pawn to open up the h file but i mean we don't really have anything in the h file right now we could get it of course but i don't know if it takes too long time thank you christoph that's the book yes oh is there a... now you have it on on the youtube chat imagination oh, in chess by pat copy this yes you will have to check some of the diagrams because um, I, I did find some mistakes where the diagrams were were mistaken. I remember one that the queen was uh, on g5, I think, and in the diagram it was on f4, but most of them okay. are right. So you and you can also double check your answers because sometimes your answer might work even though if it's uh, even though yeah, it's not a book answer. <laughs> I know I did that. I had another chess puzzle book, and sometimes I would see that my answer was not correct, and sometimes it really wasn't. But also sometimes yeah. it would. Be. 
plus seven and the correct answer would be plus nine. Well, okay. Maybe and yours is plus are... seven, so that would still work, no? <laughs> okay, but let's see. Pikaya is saying knight g4 is a check, so it's more forcing. That's true, knight g4 with the idea of king g7 and rook h8. Yes, you kind of have that right. Uh, king g7 and rook h8 after pawn takes g4. So we're going to, to mix all the ideas here. Yeah, so we don't open the h right away, but we have the h4 move at some point. Yeah, we're going to take back with the with the h pawn actually. So let me show you because here the move is bishop g4. And it's really really yeah. nice. Um when you put this when I put this move uh, with the engine, the engine gave me advantage for white. <laughs> then I played a few more moves and it said equal and after I showed the final move, it was like uh, minus 4. But without wow. really showing uh without really seeing it from the very beginning because this is a move that uh, plays for compensation and plays against the pieces the thing is that white here doesn't really have a way to to defend to get his pieces they are all stuck either on the uh, queen side or just that knight on f4 really pretty but it's out of play no so pawn takes g4 let's see pawn takes g4 and the plan is simple now that you know it put the knight here king g7 rook h8 remove this knight and <laughs> just made <laughs> somehow it takes a while. yeah it does take a while but um what will white do that's a, a big question yeah so he goes rook h1 and now knight f3 bishop takes pawn takes and funnily enough, this position is already lost for white. There is nothing he can do to prevent bishop takes f4, king g7, rook h8, and bringing the queen in with mate. White played king g1, and we're going to see that uh, in a moment. But I, we're going to look at this move, knight d3, which, is, which was one of the first suggestions of the engine when I put this position. And it said that knight d3 would be advantage for white. So then I thought, what if we, uh, what if we just play for the same idea as in the game, because it wanted to play something else. I don't really remember the move. So then, King G one, and here Bishop G five, oh, because this is still there. The point of Knight D three is, of course, that if we take Queen takes F three, and well, we're not uh, getting mated with White anymore. And here comes a very, very funny line. Very nice. You're going to enjoy this. Bishop ta uh, pawn takes c6. And now queen f5. <laughs> Just let him uh, let him take everything. Yeah. Pawn takes b7. What do we play here? <laughs> uh, uh, I think rook h8, right? Rook h8. Great. Yeah. Okay, but I take. Then we take back and, and we sacrifice h1 and queen h3 and b2. And that's mate. Yeah. If b1, that if b8, that's mate. But I will yeah. play queen f1 and you don't have queen h3 anymore. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay. Well, then, uh, then what? Because now we're still down a piece and he's about to make a queen. Yes. <laughs> also, I don't know if you can hear my stomach making noises. It's, it's, uh, sorry if that goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot hear anything. So it's okay. You're safe, Sophie. Um, oh, this is so tricky. It is. And it's almost like it's, a study, you know? <laughs> yes, and I can almost feel like if you had this in a game and you had seen this and then they play Queen F1 and you're like... <gasps> I lost <laughs> the game. <laughs> no, but, but okay, there, and that, that's the point where you have to keep calm and see if there's anything that could still be winning. Okay, so there are some ideas of bringing the Queen over with Queen H5, Bishop E3 and Queen H5. 
Um, bishop f4 with the idea of queen h5 as well, I guess. Rook h, horse, horse uh, takes. And knight d7 what? stops the promotion. Yes, knight d7 stops the promotion, so we at least have that and we continue the attack. Wait a minute, bishop f4. Ah, okay, yeah, bishop f4. Then queen f5 afterwards. Queen is on f5. Queen h5, h5. Ah, h5. But if bishop f4, I take with the knight, right? Yeah. That's, that's a problem. But is that what we have to do right now? Do we have to, like... Bring the queen <laughs> over, yes. Keep looking for, oh, for options. <laughs> you are missing one candidate move here. Yeah, bishop b3 is sharper, but then b8 queen. That's that's right. Shall I? <laughs> what if we... I can't get anything to work right now. I mean, I think I would maybe check out and play... 97. D7. But it's not what, because then, okay, then C6 and it's just lost, right? I don't know. Maybe it's not lost. Maybe, maybe you have something. Maybe it's not lost. Maybe you still have the same idea as you do now. <laughs> but then it's unnecessary to play. Oh, Knight. there you have it. It showed is, up is in it the chat. <laughs> uh, Rook H1. No. I was looking at Rook. Okay, and now I see it on Twitch, Brunovsky, and on YouTube, Adele has it. Queen, queen g4. What? Okay. Queen g4? But I'm going to go b8. <laughs> yes. So what do we do now? We... <laughs> I don't know, actually. Because if we play queen h5, he can take on h. He can take on h8, yes. True. And and <laughs> what else is there? There are some Oops. only moves here. Yes? Do we play Rook H? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which one of them? Rook H1, King takes, and we can go queen h5 but then uh, and then we get the knight in on g4 yes and this is a funny position white has two queens but he's getting mated <laughs> a queen a queen a knight and a rook right yes <laughs> so queen e5 this is another try like will you please take my queen but you'll just refuse <laughs> King h7 and queen h2. Okay, there are a couple of more checks. The spite checks, <laughs> the revenge checks, the queen h8 and rook b8, but that's that's nothing, no? Oh, what is the other? There was another uh, spite, yes, yeah, spite checks. Spite checks, I think that's the right way to call it. But when you translate it to Romanian, they're called revenge checks. So that's how I, <laughs> that's how we call them. <laughs> Yes, uh, Aritor is saying on Twitch that he's running two engines on the bishop g4 move. <laughs> Stockfish at depth 38 and it's not giving the, the line. Yeah, you have to show him the line and then he will. Uh, it will just show minus 5 or something like that for black. If you play all the moves, it's, uh, it's going to see it. Can white play queen g2? Yeah, but isn't that still mate? Queen g2 here. Wait, let's see that. Queen g2, pawn takes, king takes. I have a check on h2. King f1 is the idea. I'm going to keep going here. Okay, and now if queen h1, there is king e2. Okay. Queen h1 should still win. But if I want to mate him, I have to take on d3. And now I mate on f2 and mate on h1. So that's over. 
Wait a minute, what was the last move? Pawn takes d3, oh. do you see it? Yeah, and there was a knight, oh, there was a knight there, yeah, now I am. Yeah, there was a knight there, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't take an f2, but there was a knight there, uh, yeah. The whole point of puzzle is to not use an engine. Yes, of course, but it's uh, it's fun to check them afterwards. <laughs> Splen Splend <laughs> Splendiferous is a nice word. So this was a very nice uh, nice line. Did not happen in the in the game. But uh, it was what the engine suggested when I checked this game. Here white went king g1, which is more human, and now it's game over. And king g7 and rook h8. Yeah. Okay. Now he wants to take, take on f5 and the same mate on h3. He tried bishop h6. But this really does not help because uh, you're still going to take on f5 at some point. Queen d2, now he plays g5, and again does not care about the pawns on the queen side. Queen h3, knight e3, king g6, and, and he resigned. <laughs> because knight g4 is coming? And I oh, think oh, yeah. as well. Knight g4 too, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I, I just got nice. out of the check, no? Yeah, we really That's have some action point. on the eight. Yes. <laughs> okay, and I really wanted to show this game against Anderson. Hope uh, that's okay. Uh, it's going to take maybe 15 more minutes. This is a very famous game. Fisher plays with the white pieces. So He's let's see. Flip. Yes. Yeah, I guess he plays e4. Uh, right? No, he played b3. Oh. <laughs> he sometimes used this move. Yeah, okay. No, but uh, you'll see that he gets into a um, hedgehog type of structure. I wanted to show you how, how he gets there. Bishop f7, and now we have a reverse Sicilian. After bishop f8, knight here. And d5. And here you have the structure. Usually get the same structure with black. Not yeah. in the Sicilian. So now he plays knight d2. Castle, bishop e6. And this is the, the famous game uh, that gives us one of the well typical ideas that black has nowadays in the, in the hedgehog. Do you guys know it? <laughs> Do you know I what he know played it. here? <laughs> uh, what do we he... play here? Does weird? anybody know this? It's it sounds uh, like well, at the time the being, it was a it was a surprising surprising idea. Book A two. No, nah, that, is... okay <laughs> that is surprising, yes. It's surprising, but not much more. Oh, I hadn't noticed that you are wearing also a, a flower shirt, but Charlie did. <laughs> yeah. We are both uh, flowering always... today. That was before we... Uh... <laughs> no. Um, that's... Okay, Juan knows it. G4? Yeah, the idea is to is to go G4 and here he plays King H1. King and Christophe knows it. King G1. King H1. Rook G1. King H1. Yeah. G1 and then G4. Ah. That is the the famous idea that we have today with the black pieces. Fisher is the one who invented this. Rook G1. Now he plays knight e4, just improve pieces. And if black waits, maybe something like knight b6 here, for example, if you go something like this, h3 is going to, to come next and then g4. 
continue the, the plan. I just keep speaking over Sophie. Uh, not really, no, but sometimes she breaks and I cannot hear her. So I'm sorry about that. It's not on purpose. I'll delay on the sound. Yeah. So here, queen f7. And now g4. I'm like, oh, g6. How would you continue here? I have no idea. <laughs> let's just, <laughs> no, let's um, just normal moves now. Actually, would you, are you saying normal moves? Yes, it's just a position that you have to play. No, let's just keep keep playing this. Uh, we could maybe get the other rook on the on the king side. So playing something like uh, rook g two or g three. Mm -hmm. Um. Maybe even, no, I don't, I was thinking about g5, but I think g5, he plays f5 and gets a pretty good exactly. uh, like center. Um, so I don't think I want to play that. I want to, if, if he plays f5, I want to be able to take and open up the g file. Exactly. Mm. d4 could be an option. No, but your idea is perfect. Just okay. Just the rooks getting the other rook into yeah. yeah. Also, so now we can put it on the h three square. Maybe no, maybe rook h three as well. Yeah. It just makes sense to improve your pieces here because it's very difficult for black to find counterplay. No, it's just it's the same. The same thing happens in the hedgehog. If you just overextend with white, you're going to get uh, burned. <laughs> So here, knight b6, he plays knight c5, okay, bishop c8, keeps the bishop, and now the other knight to h4. Testing the waters, no? maybe maybe we can do something there. Yeah, maybe we could even play, put it on uh, f5. Ah, nice, Sophie sees it. <laughs> knight d7 he plays. What would now? you do here? Oh, okay. so maybe we could play it now. I'm not sure if we should take on d7 first or if we could just play knight f5 straight away. I mean, f, knight f5 is a nice idea. Um, if he takes, then we take back. And this bishop is hard to defend. Um, yeah, can we just play knight f5 straight away? <laughs> Can we play knight f5? What if I take on c5, I'm wondering? You want to take on g7? Uh, called it, yeah, you called it, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, but taking on c5, I thought I would just take back, but okay, if it's more, if it's, uh, if it's safer, we can take on d7 first, and then, I don't know, he will maybe take back with the bishop, I guess. Okay. And then the bishop can take an f5. But does that? But does that matter? But do you want to take on d7 here? In this position? You have some no, space advantage. Uh, well, it's maybe a waste of time. Also, there's a theme about going d4 and then bishop c4. Ah, nice. I hadn't looked at that. So you want d4 and if I take bishop c4. Okay. Yeah, maybe not straight away because the knight could jump knight to five, maybe. Six. Yeah. But it's uh... no on d four right now. I take on c five. Yeah. You wanna should we move the knight on c five? Should we play knight e four, for example, just to not mm. trade pieces? Exactly. Yes, you have to play knight e four here. No trading pieces, your knight is an active piece and it will probably help in your attack. But also black doesn't have much space. So we keep the knight here. And then knight f5, yes. Knife f5. Knife at 5 yes. <laughs> so I'm not going to um, ask you anymore here. So should I ask you? <laughs> what do we play here? 
Night of five? Night of five. <laughs> yes, and it does work now. Yeah. So now if the point is, let's show this. Pawn takes a five, takes, and g7 is hanging. No, no way to stop yeah, that. Yeah, and uh, knight e6 here to defend it. Yeah, exactly. No knight e6, true. Okay, so this is no point in analyzing. He played bishop e6. Knight back. And here he plays knight to e7. He wants to get rid of this knight on f5. What are we going to do? Black pieces, it's just so cramped. Yeah. Uh, really not ready. Okay. Uh, yes, this is Fischer, Fischer versus Anderson. I showed it because it's a famous game and I, I asked Sophie about if she knew this game and she didn't. So I thought this is a, a classical that she needs to know. Well, Luca is educating me in the classic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we could take the bishop on g7. Yeah. You would have to take back with the... Uh... No, he could maybe take with the queen, but... I don't know. Uh, he could take I mean, no, way. He's playing h4 and... He took with the king. That's why I took in the, uh, with the king now. And h4 now? h4 now? What else is there? f4? <laughs> <laughs> yes, f4, because you want to open the bishop. And what else? d4? We could <laughs> just okay. There's also you could take the pawn on no, I don't want to take the pawn on b7 because then he can maybe take on b3. Um, I don't know. There's I'm another good, at, there's another good candidate that four looks natural. d4, d4, knight six, c5, bishop e6 is, is okay. bad. E5, bye bye. Bye bye, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, that's something like that. No, because if you want uh, to open the bishop, right? This was one of your ideas. Uh, yes, of course. Okay, I'm still, I was still af afraid of uh, F5, but of course that's not working. Now. Not anymore, because the bishop is gone. So you attack, you attack the base of the, the pawn chain here. And this yeah, is... G5. G5 is uh, almost game over, yeah. He tried here. Uh, rook f3. On bishop d5, we will just have e4, so nothing, nothing happening there. Play here, and now takes on g6. Now the thing is that black can't take because knight e4, and then e5 will be hanging. Yeah. And knight f6. No, this is just over. Yeah, I think so. So he plays king to h8, knight e6, rook takes, what would you do here? I think I would take an f5 and then play... <laughs> I don't know, it just looks Sophie so logical. Just... <laughs> Sophie yeah. as uh, aggressive as always. Yes. Um, take, take, but I don't want to lose <laughs> the f6, the f6 pawn is seems like an important but maybe i can't avoid to lose it if i this this here green takes now the book is hanging no maybe it's maybe it's too much mm. okay remember your pieces yeah i know the queen is not really in this at all the queen is not in this at all, and not only the queen, you have many ways to improve. Sorry? Yeah, I was looking at playing d4 to open up like a little bit. Yeah. Queen, uh, but then I'm shutting down my bishop uh, temporarily at least. And maybe he can just play e4 if I go d4. Mm. No, actually, if he goes e4, aren't you just opening everything at some point after d5? 
d4 is what he played it's not the only move but i like d4 a lot because you open everything not only the queen but also the bishop and you're going to have this threat yeah that's true but what did he did uh anderson play e4 no he didn't he took on d4 okay. we're going to see that but let's see e4 if you were worried do i have maybe just here no okay you find sorry just where Maybe just going with the rook on h3 or f4, maybe? Rook f4 yeah, should okay. work. Rook h3 probably works, but now... But now your line works. Your line works now, Sophie. Uh, what? Uh, ah, now we can say again f5. Okay. Because then you open the bishop, yeah? With d5. Yes. Yeah, and then that's what I... the f6 pawn is important. <laughs> <laughs> so he takes and here... Well, here we have to decide if we play d5 first or rook g7 first. Because rook g7, um, if he takes an f6, then d5 is... Yeah. Looks very good. I think you can start either way. Not sure if there's any difference, but this looks completely winning, no? Convincing, yes. Yes, so e4 does not work because of rook f5. He had to take on d4 and the bishop gets in. d3, okay, here he took because there are problems with the knight on f5 now. And if he takes on f5, opens the g-file, he hasn't even sacrificed the rook. That's great. <laughs> so black took on d3. Oh, and if the knight moves away, uh, now you can play h4, for example. And still open the g-file, no? Mm. And this was the game, and here black didn't survive for long. Id6, yeah. and here. And still h4 h4, h5, queen goes to g4. And we are up material, which is so nice. We are up material, yes. <laughs> we have attack and uh, an extra... Advantage. And an extra exchange, yeah. yeah. Okay, now I like how the way he plays e4. Open the rook, take the d5 square. Just to make sure there's nothing there, no? Rook d5. Uh, rook h3 now. Knight takes. Okay, if pawn takes, I go uh, queen h4 or queen g5, no? Yeah. That looks winning. So he takes like this and now f4. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's very nice the way he wins this because he's not really in a hurry to do anything, no? It's just mm. improve another piece. Let's get closer to the king. Yeah, I think he, he was enjoying this. He was enjoying this a lot for sure, yes. <laughs> 96, bishop takes and black resign. Yeah. F5 is coming next. And that would be yeah. over. And that would be all for today. <laughs> Let me just... Very nice tactics and games you, uh, you brought. And I can see Harris is asking if there's a way to improve your visualization skill. Yes, I, I saw this question, but I, I, I thought about that I would answer it in the end. How do you improve the visualization skill? Uh, in my opinion, just by solving. Because the more you solve in your head, the better you would get with visualization. Just don't play the moves on the board. <laughs> and try to... Yes, actually... Sorry? Uh, when, you... use, I always, when we do these uh, lessons, I always make use of uh, the arrows. But that's also so, you know, to show you guys what I'm thinking. But if yeah. I saw tactics on my own on chess.com or something, I try to not make all the arrows on the board to try to, you know, uh, visualize the position instead of just having the arrows help me all the time. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the way it goes. Oh, and also when you, for example, you read a book 
uh, whatever book you are reading and you are looking at an annotated game, let's say you play it on the board and then at some point you have a line. So the author gives you an explanation. Instead of playing the line, one useful thing you can do is uh, play the line in your head. So you just play the line and then imagine the position in the end and only afterwards play it on the board and see if, if it matches with what you have it's in your mind. Yeah. That's also a way to, to improve visualization. Fisher had an ease to win games a king logical move that is frankly annoying <laughs> because it shows how bad we are. <laughs> yeah, the truth is that he yeah. makes <laughs> he made both both games uh, look so easy. I personally I know this game because it's famous and it's a beautiful game. But I personally uh my favorite of this session was the previous one that I showed you uh, this one against Nikolic. Yeah. This was my personal favorite. <laughs> yeah, that was a very nice one as well. Uh, finding, the, uh, yeah. finding this bishop g4, no? And the, and the other line with uh, two queens on the board is just fantastic. Uh, as a teacher, I'd like to say <laughs> thank you for the inspiration. Thank you very much. Glad to, uh, glad to inspire. Imagine yourself getting flagged. <laughs> Your visualization would improve for sure. Okay, if you guys have any other questions, I would uh, I will just wait a few more minutes before we finish the stream. <laughs> Next time you could show how Swizzler lost against a certain Renier using the Hedgehog. Uh, only if Renier allows that, maybe he can uh, he can show it yourself. <laughs> When will we stream again? Is it in two weeks or is it? Uh... Yes, that's in two weeks because next week uh, you have the Champions Tour. That's going to be a huge event. So uh, we are going to uh, have the stream in two weeks from now. Probably the same, same uh, date and time. Funny, funny enough, when you when you mentioned Sviller against Renier, Renier just walked in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so he was uh, he was here. Uh, Juan is referring to the historical moment when Renier beat Sviller in the World Championship in the in the Rapid Blitz Championship. It was a rapid game, but this one was a good game. <laughs> you could show that. That would be nice to see. <laughs> Why didn't I show the game of the century? Um, which one is the game of the century? <laughs> Probably a lot of people I'm have not, seen uh... that. Do you know it, Sophie? Which one is the game of the, the century? I definitely... No, I... I didn't know... Uh... Yeah, I would recognize it if I saw it, though. <laughs> probably, but I, I probably don't know it's called like like that. I tried to also to ch choose some games that are not so famous. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. So we will have to uh, find the moves instead of remembering them. Who is the next person? Let me see if I can... If I can see it already. Let me check. Who is coming after Fisher? Okay, so someone between Karpov, Kasparov, probably Karpov because he's he's first. That's going yeah. to be fun. It is. Yeah. He's not so uh, known for being an attacking <laughs> an player. Attack. No, but he's going to. He's going. He, he has some good games. Oh, the game against Bayer. I know it. Um, I have it. I had it here, but it's also a, a famous game, the one with knight takes c4 and everything. Yes, I, I know that game. It's a uh, it's a great game, but I think uh, less known games are better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, Fisher versus Byron. Yes, I, I remember that game. 
Okay, thank you very much then. And with this, we are going to to finish this. And I will see you guys in two weeks, probably at the same same hour. But do check back on YouTube and see when the stream is scheduled. Probably 3 p.m. is going to be the time. So in two weeks from now. Thank you all very much for joining us. Have a great week. Bye.